Joining me is former footballer Winston White. We're going to talk about Winston's football career. So, Winston, how old were you when you uh, started to get interested in football? Well, uh, cracky. It's, honestly, it's the first memory I ever had was, was uh, kicking a ball around. Uh, in fact, after my christening uh, picture... My second picture was with a football, and uh, I had tears in my eyes because uh, I did not want to get my photograph taken without a football. So that tells you how passionate I was about the game right from the very beginning. You started out at Leicester City, which was your hometown club. How did they sign you? Right, OK, so I was playing for a local team. Um, they were called Watkin Juniors, and um, it was the first sort of organised team that I actually... Um, you know, wanted to play for the rest of the time I was playing for my school teams and so on. And um, unbeknownst to me, um, there was a chief scout called Ray Shaw who was uh, watching me. I'd heard of Ray and I heard that, um, you know, that he was looking uh, for talented players, for the not just for the uh, Leicester City setup, but for the county. And um, anyway, um, apparently he'd been watching me from the time I was 14 years of age. And uh, before my 16th birthday, and I was sort of wondering what I was going to do with my life, um, he, uh, he knocked on my door and uh, spoke to my brother. And uh, my brother pulled me into the, the living room and we had a conversation about the poss possibility of me signing for Leicester City. And um, yeah, you know, that, that was it really. It was just a case of watching my talent for a couple of years and watching me grow and progress and not just for my local team, but for the county team as well. And um, yeah, that was it. That was the start of my career. What was it like when you actually made your first team debut? <laughs> well, I, any player will tell you that that is, the, um, that is the utopia moment. That is the moment where you, you know, you, you just feel, you, you just feel, you know, elation, Fear, anxiety, you know, it's a roller coaster of emotion, but it's what you work for. And uh, I was, I did not see it coming because there was a great player called Keith Weller who used to play for Leicester City. And uh, I never thought that I would get the opportunity as early as I did. But anyway, he got injured. Um, I played in his position uh, against Stoke City away. And uh, it was a perfect time for me because, I mean, Stoke City, although obviously they were a first division club at the time, they, they, it wasn't a huge crowd, so you know I didn't feel the fear that I would have done if I'd have, let's say, played at a, I don't know, an Old Trafford or a uh, an Anfield or something like that. So I, I, I got into the game fairly quickly. My first touch was good, and uh, yeah, it was just an amazing feeling. We had a really good team there as well. Uh, we had about six or seven internationals playing for Leicester as well. So they were great. They knew I had the ability to do it, and they, you know, they they were really good to me. Um, as I uh, as I progressed in the game, you left Leicester in 1979 and joined Hereford United. What was the reasons behind the move? Okay, so although I did get my opportunity because Keith Weller got injured, um, you know this is a, a, a kind of a curse of a lot of uh, footballers. Um, we finished seventh in the table, the you know the old first division, which is now the Premier League now, and they sacked the manager. Now that was the highest. Um, position that Leicester City had ever been in and they sacked the manager a manager called Jimmy Bloomfield Jimmy Bloomfield absolutely loved his, his youth team players there was myself and three other players that he gave uh, debuts to and we were excited about the coming season because we knew that you know it was a Leicester City team that was aging so we'd get an opportunity and they brought uh, in a an, an, another Leicester legend a guy called Frank McClintock who I'm sure everybody's heard of now, Frank, great Arsenal player, great Leicester City player, and played for Scotland a few times. But it was his first job in management, and the job was too big for him. And although Frank played me in a few games, I didn't get as many games as I thought I should have done. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were, were of that opinion. And they, Frank left after one season. Uh, Jock Wallace came in. And uh, I just wasn't Jock's sort of player. Jock was a, uh, you know, sort of a, he, was, he, he wanted workers. He didn't want ball players, and I was a ball player, as it proved when I came to Hereford United. And I had two years left on my Leicester City contract, but I just needed games, and I had to leave to get games. And and I wanted to go to a team where there was a a young manager who understood the way I played. And uh, Mike Bailey um, made an inquiry, 
Jot Wallace came to me and said Mike Bailey made an inquiry. And I met up with Mike Bailey and Bobby Gould, the assistant manager of Hereford at the time. And I sat down with them over two meetings and uh, they convinced me that Hereford United were going places. They told me that the sort of players they were looking at, you know, at you know Aston Villa, at Coventry City. And I felt it was the right move for me based on their football philosophies. So I made the move. And it was just, it was really honestly just to play in a team, a young team that would appreciate my abilities and... I just wanted to get a lot of league games under my belt. Did you feel a little? Did you feel a little bit of anxiety when Mike Bailey left because Frank Lord came in? And did you get on okay with him? Um, no, in a word, no. Um, you know, Mike left. Um, unbeknownst to you know us, we didn't see it coming. But you know, he went on to Charlton. And uh, Frank came in and, you know, again, it's a curse of players when the coaches change because, you know, you as a young player, you you know, you, you are part of a culture. You're helping to create a culture. So Frank Lord came in and he, he changed the culture. Uh, those players that I was learning with and around, um, he got rid of a number of them um, and he brought his own players in, uh, a lot of players from the north of England. Which is fine, you know. I get on with you know. You, you should be just judged on your ability, but I didn't really see the way that I'd been playing in the past. I didn't really see Frank allowing me to play that way. So again, it became challenging. Obviously, we had a, a, a very difficult season that season as well. We were struggling towards the bottom of the table, and uh, it does. Uh, I did suffer with a bit of a crisis of confidence, I must admit, and uh, it, it, it didn't bode well overall. What was it like playing against Leicester in the FA Cup for Hereford? It was great. Uh, it was it was really great. Uh, you know, shame we lost the game, but I you know I do remember it well. A lot of my family members were there, and I wanted to prove myself. Um, I, did, I had an okay game, uh, but you know, Leicester City were a good side. And uh, they went on to, to obviously win the win promotion that season as well, if I'm not mistaken. So they were a good side, and uh, it was great playing against some of my old mates. And it was it was the way the game was, you know. They were very uncompromising. I got some hard tackles from Larry May, from my buddy Tommy Williams, who played centre backs. And uh, but it was all in the game. But I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, just a shame that we didn't uh, we didn't win the game, or at least get a draw. You made 175 appearances for Hereford. Are there any other games that stick out in the memory? Yes, there was, actually. There's, there's quite a few, to be honest with you. But uh, one of the games that stuck out was the Welsh Cup final against Swansea. That was a, a terrific game. That journey, that season, was a really terrific journey. Because, you know, although we, again, we hadn't been doing particularly well in the league, uh, you know, we, we really showed our colours in the in the Welsh Cup. And that final was, uh, was, a, was a real standout game and again unfortunately we did win the game but Swansea were a first division team at the time and I thought we gave a really good account of ourselves so that for me was one of the standout games for me. You left Hereford 1983 you went to Hong Kong Rangers was it just a case of experience in a different footballing culture? Yeah there was a number of factors and again you know I'm going to put a bit of personal stuff in here but um, the the, the previous year I lost my mum sadly and uh, you know I was obviously still young at the time and my mum was young at the time and you know I was always a bit of a mummy's boy I gotta admit and you know it, it I just wanted to experience something now by that time obviously playing you know 175 games and you know whatever 10 plus games with Leicester City as well you know I was seen as a uh, as a almost like a seasoned player so I did want to try something different and the fact that you know I you know, I'd lost my mum. I, ju- I just felt as if I needed a challenge, a new challenge. I, I didn't want to become stale. So I was offered the opportunity, a player called Derek Spence, who was a Northern Ireland international, who I knew well. He contacted me. Um, John Newman was the manager of, of uh, Hereford at the time. And he, you know, he, he wished me all the best and uh, gave me an opportunity to speak to Hong Kong Rangers. And uh, they offered me a really good deal. And uh, I just thought it was a really good opportunity. So I did, and I, I'm, I'm glad I did. What was the experience like playing football over there? Right, OK. So it was a very immature market. 
there was a lot of European players over there trying to uh, increase the, you know, improve the standard of the game over there. But yes, it was different. I mean, for example, you know, when a team here in the, in the UK gets a corner kick, you, you know, there's a cheer, there's an anticipation. When you get a corner kick over there, the roof comes off the building. It's like you've scored a goal. So they cheer at the most, you know, at different times when you don't expect it to. So their views on the game were slightly different, the fans' views on the game. Uh, the coaching side of it, I thought, was very good. Uh, the coaches were excellent. They had a number of European coaches as well. So it was an emerging market. And I know people have been there since and said now it's a, a very well-established uh, uh sort of football markets over there now. But at the time, I was part of that learning process. We had players like George Best over there at the time. Uh, there were some top former first division players over there. So it was growing and growing. But now, as I said, it's, it's a, an established market now. But it was a great experience. I learned a little bit of Cantonese. I've uh, forgotten most of it. But it was, it was just a, 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 a t complete 180 from what I was used to. And, and that's what I really wanted. I wanted that sort of travel and that experience um, to, to enhance my game, and it did. You returned to England and you played for Chesterfield, Port Vale and Stockport. Uh, you only played briefly for those three clubs. Was it a case of you weren't happy with what they were offering or the, the market in the, in the UK changed and they weren't you know, up for offering a, a longer-term contract? Yeah, well, this is one of the crazy things about the game. You know, when you're out of the game, whether you're injured or whether you are, uh, you know, you've left the country, you know, you, you've forgotten very quickly. Uh, football is very um, uncompromising in that way. So when I came back, um, it was it was the end of the season when I came back. So there was a lull. So obviously, a lot of coaches and managers were looking for players, and I so I. Um, I didn't have an agent at the time. Um, I contacted a couple of clubs and they said they wanted to have a look at me. Port Vale were very, very, very interested in signing me because they just recently sold um, Mark Chamberlain and they wanted a replacement for him. And I was that sort of sort of player. Um, but I, I, you know, I needed. I knew that I needed um, to be in the right team because I knew the next move was going to be my most important move. So it was my decision to sign non-contract terms with all those teams. I didn't want to commit myself. And um, Barry uh, had a great interest in me. I, I remember I played a fantastic game uh, against Barry when I played for Hereford United. And uh, I, know there, I knew there was a bit of interest in me. But I knew they didn't have a great deal of money. Anyway, the bottom line is is they sold a player called Paul Hilton to West Ham. So they acquired a bit of money. Uh, they told me they wanted to sign me. We actually agreed terms, but they couldn't sign me until they sold Paul Hilton completely and got some of the money. So I actually went around to play, play for some of these teams like Chesterfield, Stockport, and um, who was the other one? Paul Vale. Vale. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was really a case of waiting for Barry to uh, to sign me, and uh, and that's what I did. We'll go back to your club career in a bit, but whilst you were at Hereford in 1979, you played in a game, the Whites versus the Blacks at the Hawthorns. What was that experience like? Oh my goodness! Wow, that was an amazing experience. I didn't realise the significant significance of it at the time, and I think. Most of the players who play, whether it be the black team or the white team, never, ever realised how significant that was. Because although there was a lot of racism in football against black players, a lot of, you know, negative stuff, um, I chose to ignore it. You know, if I looked for it, I would have found it, but I chose to ignore it. My only concern was when my family were coming to watch me. So when I was offered the opportunity, when uh, Cyril Regis contacted me when I was at Hereford and asked me if I wanted to play in this game, uh, myself, Stuart um, Phillips and Valmore Thomas, I jumped at the opportunity. And uh, the most exciting thing for me was the fact that I was playing with people like Cyril Regis, Laurie Cunningham, Brendan Batson. Remy Moses, George Berry, Bob Hazel. I knew those. I knew Bob and, and George from playing against them a few times anyway, but I'd never played against Cyril or, or, or with Cyril and or Laurie. So that was an amazing experience in itself. The game itself was it wasn't a, it was like a friendly match, but there was a sense of desire to win the game 
uh, particularly on the black team side, as you can imagine, you know, it was that sort of feeling of, look, you know, we're going to prove to you that we've arrived, that we ain't going anywhere. And um, we did. We played, we played well in the game, showed a lot of finesse, a lot of skill. And uh, we won the game 3-2, and it was terrific. And I, I had a really good game as well, which was uh, a nice feeling. Going back to your club career, you settled at Berry. Uh, you made 125 appearances. Um, you, had, you had a good run at Gig Lane. You uh, got promotion there as well. That's right, yeah. You know, Berry was, um, was an interesting time because, again, I knew it was the right move for me. Although Jim Eiley had signed me, um, we just missed out on the playoffs that season. So they brought in Martin Dobson, who, again, and a player who some people would, would remember, a very established international player. And uh, he liked my style. And he brought in Frank Casper as assistant manager. And they had a culture. They created a culture and a philosophy there. And we did work very well. And just as Mike Bailey promised me at Hereford, um, Martin Dobson assured us that he was going to bring in younger players. And he did. Young, team, young players from Manchester United, Man City. And, uh, you know, he created a really good nucleus of players. Uh, he brought in an experienced player called Leighton James. Um, who I'm sure everybody knows as well. And it was just a really good team. With um, And Martin Dobson was player manager as well, which helped. When you have that leadership on the pitch, it really helps. And, yeah, we got through that season and uh, we got promotion. And uh, it was a terrific season. You know, I got I got player of the season that season. So it was, uh, I, I, you know, I felt really good about that season. And uh, I felt that I was a truly established player because by that time I played, you know, near on, you know, 260, 270 league games. So I knew the game then and uh, it was a great feeling to get promotion. You were on the move again uh, to Colchester. Uh, what was it like playing football down in South Essex? Yeah, well, again, um, I I needed that change of environment. I'd been in the northwest now for obviously for a little time um, and I, I just wanted to make a change. And, and again, it was a case of I got injured at Bury. I got a, 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 a did my medial ligament and I was out for a little while. And David Lee came in, a good winger, came in and did well. And, um, you know, I felt there was room for myself and David in the same team. Um, but anyway, um, I, you know, I was left out the side for a few games through injury and then I came back, I was sub. And again, I just knew I had great belief in my ability, so I, I needed to move. And again, I played some couple of great games against Colchester. Uh, Mike Walker, uh, who went on to, be co- to coach um, Norwich City, wanted to sign me. I went down there for talks. They offered me really good money. And, um, you know, I liked the, you know, the, the whole package. And I felt that, you know, again, I wanted to have a different feel and a flavour of the game, uh, which is different in the sort of southeast as opposed to the northwest. So I decided to make the move, and uh, and again, you know, it was uh, it, it was a move that was, you know, it, I, I wouldn't say it was a, a a a move upwards, but it was a move that I felt that was right for me at the time. Your next journey was up to Burnley, who were uh, always known as a bit of a sleeping giant when they were in Division Four. Um, how did you find right. it at Turf Moor? Right. Well, again, I think I played my best football at Turf Moor. Um, I. <laughs> It's incredible how this game is. I remember we, when I was playing for Colchester, we went to Leighton Orient and we got spanked 8-0. And, you know, it, that was the worst, you know, sort of beating that I'd ever had as a player. And I felt unbelievably low, as every player should do, getting beat at that sort of score. And um, I was feeling quite down, I've got to be honest. But, you know, footballers have a way of bouncing back. You know, you're only as good as your next game, is the saying. Anyway, um, there was uh, an interest in me from Burnley. Uh, Brian Miller wanted, uh, had an interest in me. And the manager at the time, a guy called Roger Brown from Colchester, said, look, you can talk to them, but, you know, we, uh, we're not going to give you away. So, um, anyway, I spoke, spoke to Brian and I knew one or two of the players at, uh, at Burnley as well. Um, Andy Farrell was a player who was at Colchester and he'd, he'd gone to Burnley. And I spoke to Andy and he said, look, this is a club that's going places. And, uh, yeah, I made the move and it was a terrific move. And, uh, yeah, I played some of my best football. By that time, I was... I think I was 29. I was. Just, I think I was just coming up to my 30th birthday. So I was probably the fittest, strongest I'd ever been, and definitely, um, you know, knew the game 
well by then. So um, I was happy to make the move, and I'm glad I did because, uh, like I said, I played some of my best football up in Burnley. I thought as well the Burnley support was always good, even in the Division 4 days. They'd always bring a, a fantastic following to, to Hereford United matches. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've ever been to Burnley before, but Burnley's in like this little valley, like a little, almost like a basin, yeah? And there's not a huge amount to do with all respect to the area apart from follow the football. And the fans are absolutely obsessed. It's religious-like the way they follow the game. You know, I remember I bought a house um, about eight, nine, ten miles outside of Burnley and uh, it was a quiet little area and, um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, just stay there and just, you know, be quiet and there were so many Burnley fans in and around the area. It was incredible and the, the atmosphere at the games was quite sensational. A lot of teams came then. It was like their cup final and yeah, you're right. It, you know, I'm so happy where they are now and, you know, but it was only a matter of time. Now they've got great administration and they've got a really good manager, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, I, they, they, they deserve it because the fans have stayed very loyal to them. Your next stop was to go to West Brom and you were signed by Bobby Gould. What, what was he like as a manager? Bobby, I like Bobby. Bobby was a breath of fresh air. When, he, when, I, when I signed for Hereford, he was... Um, he was coach there, as you know, and he always had a passion for the game, as you can tell by his uh, his appearances. Bobby had played a lot of matches, and uh, he was very passionate about the game. And what Bobby wanted me to do was come in, because he knew I was passionate about the game. And he wanted to add a little bit of experience to the, the young team that he had, especially in the... Uh, you know the the the, uh, the reserve team uh, players. They were they were not as disciplined as, as he would like, and he emphasised to me that he wanted to bring somebody in who was a a good professional, which I was. And um, I came in, and uh, it was great because my first game, host home game for West Brom, was against Leicester City, and uh, I scored, which was a great feeling, and. Uh, that's one of those moments that I think every player can tell you, apart from your debut, which was amazing. When you score against your home team, you know, your, your, you know the team that pretty much let you go, really, it's almost like redemption. And that's what I felt at the time. Um, so I, I almost like come 360 and, and, you know, playing against my home team. It was a great feeling. And, you know, unfortunately, West Brom didn't, you know, sort of punch their weight. But I had a great experience there. And it was great to be back in, up at the higher levels of football as well. And because uh, I always had belief in myself that I could get back up to the higher levels. And I, I achieved it. You carried on your football league career. You went back to Bury, then there were spells at Doncaster, Carlisle, and Wigan. Was it a case then you'd had enough, or did you want to pursue something different? No, um, you know, I got again. I, I, I got injured at West Brom, and, they, and again, a man, new manager came in. Uh, Ozzy Ardiles came to West Brom, and by that time, I was thirty-two. Um, he definitely made it clear to a number of the senior players like Graham Roberts, myself and Colin West that he was going to look for look to youth. Now, you know, I, I always feel that's an unfair thing to do because I think that you should always have a mix of young players and, and older players, you know, especially if you're good enough. It doesn't matter what age you are. But coaches come in now and they decide what they want and that's it. You know, there's no say on the matter as a player. And, um, you know, so it was obvious that I, you know, he was going to play me, even though I did play well for West Brom. So I decided to make a move. Now that you know the Northwest had always been good to me, um, I had still had a lot of contacts up there. So I decided to, you know, to try my lot up in that area again. So going back to Bury was, you know, I didn't have to think twice about it. They were in the same division as West Brom at the time. So um, you know, I uh, I made the move, and uh, again. I didn't sign full-time con you know, contracts because I didn't feel my age. I still, ha I felt I still had another five years left in me. I felt amazingly fit, and uh, so yeah. So I played for a number of teams up there on non-contract basis, with the view to seeing the season out and starting the season fresh uh, in, um, in, in in August. Now, was it a case of an injury <laughs> that, that stopped it, or did you have it? It was an injury. It was an injury. Um, I got an injury at Doncaster, and uh, it, it just didn't feel right. I decided that by the end of that season, if if I wasn't feeling right, that I would I, I would call it a day. And um, 
I went to Wigan actually, uh, and I did really well at Wigan. I scored a couple of goals on my debut, home debut, but the knee just didn't feel right. And as you know from my Hereford United days, I was always a very quick player, and I, I, you know, a, a lot of my attributes were my pace as well as my skill and I just lost that ex explosive pace and as you get injured you know that's what happens you know you you don't get the elasticity in your leg in your in your in your, uh, in your soft tissue so I decided that you know I was gonna I was gonna call it a day and I had so many offers by that time I was just turning 34 I had a lot of offers to stay in the game but I just felt that I didn't want to do myself justice and I didn't want to be you know, one of those old players just going around hustling for a living. I felt that by that time, you know, I'd, I'd done my time, I'd, you know, 18 years in the game. And, uh, you know, I'd accumulated enough resources to make a start in other things. And I was a PFA delegate, so I'd done a few courses. I, you know, I, I, thought, I felt that I had, you know, things to offer, whether it be in the game still or outside of the game. So I decided to call it a day. And what kind of work did you go into when you retired? Right, okay, so a number of things actually. I, um, a friend of mine uh, up in the Burnley area had a restaurant, so uh, he invited me to get involved in the restaurant business. So I was involved in that for a period of time. And uh, I realized that that wasn't for me because, you know, it's, uh, it's not much fun in a restaurant when it's you know it's it's a lot of work and uh, it takes over your whole life. I I, I, mean, I was a bit of a free spirit at that point, so I needed something where I could control my own destiny. So I uh, I, I got a, a retail menswear uh, sh a store in Burnley, which is very good, called the Far Post, very successful. Um, I then decided after a couple of years that I needed uh, a, a good foundation of education, so I went and got a degree. I got, uh, then I went on to get my MBA. Then I worked for a company called Life Fitness as a um, as a commercial uh, fitness supplier who provide all the uh, the big gyms in the UK. And I got up the management chain very quickly with that. And then the economic downturn kicked in, and I decided that I was going to go to where my parents grew up, which is in the Caribbean. So I made the the transition to the Caribbean in uh, 2008, and set up a business there in the fitness industry, and very successful there as well. And uh, then I transitioned to Florida, where I am today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love the sun. I, 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 you know, wake up to the sun pretty much most mornings, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm having, I live a great lifestyle now, and uh, it's all down to, to football and the disciplines and the, you know, the, the standards that um, that I set in the game. I try to live by those standards now. So the game was really good to me. I'm still involved in the game. I have my own agency. I um, take teams from the US to the UK, and vice versa. Um, so I'm still in involved in the game and I'm working on a couple of other projects at the moment with some big name players where we are looking to uh, develop a, uh, a program in grassroots uh, involving the business community, uh, some big name athletes, not just footballers, but athletes. And, uh, you know, helping to de develop the grassroots programs for those kids that are, let's say, of, of lesser privilege. So, I, you know, it's my way of giving back to the game as well. Um, that's the way I was brought up. So um, I'm still involved in the game. And I, I, my wife, she, you know, she, she says she's a football widow because every Saturday and Sunday, I'm watching the game all the time, still still learning things, and uh, you know it's uh, it's it's the game that gave me all I have, and I'm I'm so thankful for that. 